Let's talk about that officiating apocalypse down in Tuscaloosa, plus all the Missouri news I missed while I was on vacation last week. And if you'll indulge me, let's talk about Nick Bolton and those Kansas City Chiefs. Quite a football game last night. All this and more coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And thanks for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. And by the way, today's episode is brought to you by Sonos. Experience the game like never before with Sonos Arc, the premium soundbar for TV, movies, music, gaming, and more. Visit Sonos.com to learn more. Well, I must apologize for being out last week, but I was down in Key West celebrating my sister-in-law's 40th birthday, so quite frankly, it was a nice opportunity for me to recharge my batteries. Been doing a lot of stuff lately, so we are now back and ready to go. So hopefully this is a, a good episode. We got plenty to get to, including, of course, yeah, that Missouri-Alabama game. Once again, a rather entertaining basketball game between the Tigers and the Crimson Tide, at least until maybe about the last 10 minutes of the game or so. To me, the Tigers were completely undone, of course, by turnovers and an inability to secure a defensive rebound there at the end of the game. But I thought the officiating at the end of that basketball game wasn't just questionable because, you know, there's always going to be questionable calls, borderline calls, calls that are missed. But to me, it was some of the most confusing and infuriating officiating I've ever seen in my life. Simply put, the Alabama defenders were allowed to just manhandle the Tiger ball handlers at the end of the game, and frankly, it just wasn't that way at the other end of the court. And I know, hey, I'm a Missouri fan, I'm a Missouri podcaster, I'm sure if you didn't actually watch that game, you might think, wow, this sounds pretty biased, right? And of course, I am biased, but I'm telling you, go back and watch the last few minutes of that game. The Tide defenders are all over Boogie Coleman's back. I mean, he's basically trying to back down. He's not even trying to do anything with the ball. Meanwhile, the Tide defenders are shoving their chest into his back and reaching around him just consistently over and over and over again. I'm sorry, they don't let you do that normally in basketball. For for those of you who've played NBA 2K, perhaps, maybe NBA Live back in the day, you know when your little brother, all he does playing defense is he just switches to the guy on the ball defensively and just mashes that square button, right? Just tries to steal the ball. Well, that was basically all Alabama was doing at the end of the game, and it worked because the officials allowed it. I thought it was embarrassing. I, I, I honestly was questioning... Do these officials have money on the Tide money line? Like, what in the world is going on? But you know what? That's enough about the officials because there's really nothing Missouri could do about it. Unfortunately, obviously, we didn't have the ball handling to keep up with whatever was going on going on, on the court in that moment. If anything, maybe you could argue that that Missouri should have put Caleb Brown in the game, just one more ball handler. But again, with the amount of physicality that the referees were allowing, I'm not sure how much that would have really mattered. And frankly, if you're going to take a look in the mirror and blame somebody other than the officials, well, take look no further than Conzo Martin. Once again, Conzo Martin with it just sort of cuts his own throat a little bit. Recently, it's been with, hey, let's take my best player out. I'll essentially foul him out myself by sitting him on the bench for 15 minutes of the first half, that kind of deal. Well, that's a terrible strategy, number one. But yet, but two nights ago, Missouri taking on Alabama and Tuscaloosa, well, frankly, he just sat Trevin Brazil for practically the entire first half, or excuse me, the entire second half. Brazil only played 12 minutes, but in those 12 minutes, by the way, he managed to knock down a three-pointer, score seven points, block a couple shots, got a steal. I mean, he was doing stuff. 
Trevin Brazil is an absolute keeper. And quite honestly, so far among the, what was it, five, six man recruiting class for the freshman class for the Tigers this year, he's the only guy who is an obvious, obvious keeper. And unfortunately, as we heard, as you've probably heard by now, Sean Duru Gordon has decided to enter the transfer portal. So unfortunately, we didn't get to know Sean very well, did we? And unfortunately, you know, I didn't see a ton in his game to think, well, we really lost a keeper there. But at the same time, we didn't get enough of an opportunity to see him. So it's disappointing that to me that the kid wouldn't even finish out his freshman year before trying to find another spot. There's a lot of time left in the season. There really is. I'm just, I'm continually surprised by how quickly your sort of modern college athlete ends up sort of giving up on the program that he started with. But again, back to Brazil, huge mistake not to play him in my opinion. And, and Conzo Martin's reasoning was essentially, well, the Crimson Tide went small. They had a bunch of guards out there. Okay, great. Fantastic. To me, that's actually an advantage for Brazil and Missouri. That's the kind of game that Missouri likes to play, really. And Brazil doesn't have a whole lot of problems, I don't think, moving his feet against a, a maybe a, a ostensibly quicker player. Again, Brazil was a guard for most of his life until he had a late growth spurt. That's one reason why Missouri was kind of able to pluck him out of relative obscurity. Because guess what? He hasn't been six foot nine for very long. And, and with this six foot nine frame, yeah, sometimes he's going to have to learn how to be physical on the post and, and block out and do all help side defense, although he's pretty darn good at that. But the point is, there's a lot of subtlety to the sort of inside play that maybe he hasn't figured out yet. Well, I don't think that's a problem against Alabama. Alabama doesn't have any post players, you know, they don't have a lot of big guys to speak of. So to me, leave Brazil out there and he's actually going to bother the heck out of Alabama to me with his length. And, and again, in limited minutes, again, two blocks, one steal, by the way, that one steal led to an absolutely spectacular dunk. The first two points of the game, I do believe. I mean, that guy is an absolute keeper and frankly, he's good enough. In my opinion, speaking of the transfer portal, if you think you'd lose him for sure, if Conzo Martin was fired, well, to me, that's got to be part of the calculus. You have to at least stop and say, is it worth keeping this kid around for at least one more year? Maybe seeing if stuff can change. I don't know. I think it's at least dis worth discussing. Probably he's not that great, right? He's not a superstar that you make your whole decision about the future of your program about him. My point is I'd be really, really bummed out if, if, well, if say if Martin and Trevin Brazil were a package deal, I have no idea if that's the case. But if it were, man, I would hate to lose that kid. That's all I'm saying. And speaking of the transfer portal, well, the portal never sleeps in football. That's for darn sure. And since I last spoke to you all, guess what? Missouri got a running back from the transfer portal, a name Columbia and Rockbridge high school people, in particular a name they'll be very, very familiar with. So let's talk about that. But first, let's talk about Get Upside. And you know what, Missouri fans? Inflation is a real, real thing. I realized it the other day when I saw that $5 a gallon for milk. Well, gas isn't getting a lot cheaper either. So guess what? I have a solution for you. It's Get Upside. And my listeners are making up to $0.25 cents for every gallon of gas Every time they fill up, just download the free get upside app on your smart device. Use the promo code score and get a bonus 25 cents per gallon on your first fill up. So you know what? Just for signing up with just with get upside, you get 25 cents per gallon off gas. But on your first tank, you can get up to 50 cents off again just by using the promo code score. So again, download the free Get Upside app, use the promo code SCORE, and get up to 50 cents per gallon cash back on your first tank. It's just that easy. And thanks for making Locked on Mizzou your first listen, and thanks for telling a friend we are free and available on all platforms. And, well, yes, Rockbridge running back Nathaniel Pete, who was formerly with the Stanford Cardinal the past three seasons, 
choosing to transfer back home to Columbia with the Missouri Tigers. And well, Martez Manuel certainly happy about that. His teammate from Rockbridge, he was very excited on social media about the whole deal. And if you're a Missouri fan, you should be excited too. He's definitely a guy that was wanted out there for sure. Power five programs like Iowa, Purdue, Washington State. I believe I saw Oklahoma State on that offer list as well. So definitely a guy that Missouri should be happy to add to the fold because you're going to have a lot of rushing production, obviously, a lot of running back production to replace with the departure of Tyler Beatty, no doubt about it. But I, I got to say, I'd be really shocked if Nathaniel Pete, who has never handled a, a huge workload in his first three years in college so far, I doubt he comes close to, to what Tyler Beatty did. And in fact, I would recommend that Missouri goes with a much more by committee approach next year. I thought Eli Young showed enough in the bowl game that he should certainly be a part of the mix there. And several other backs have had their moments as well. So to me, Nathaniel Pete, Elijah Young, those are probably your top two backs. And I would give them, uh, give them a lot of, a lot of split time and, and throw Throw some other names in there as well, whoever you like who's on the roster, whether it's Mike Cox, whether it's B.J. Harris, whoever Taj Butts, whoever it might be. And, of course, Tavoris Jones, the true freshman as well. There's a lot of guys there who could potentially play. I think Tavoris Jones is actually probably not going to redshirt next season. He's going to see some action too. The number one high school running back from Texas. Yeah, those guys are generally pretty good. So good chance we see him as well. Now, I think Nathaniel Pete will also – as he's done at Stanford, uh, definitely be a part of the kickoff return game too. He's returned 27 kicks last season for over 600 yards, so he's got plenty of experience back there as well. Something Missouri could definitely use. And since not a whole lot else has been happening on the gridiron, let's get back to the hardwood for just a little bit before we talk about that Chiefs game at the end of the show here. One thing I'll give... Conzo Martin some credit before I maybe criticize him a little more here. I think Missouri's inbound plays this year, while notoriously kind of bad under Martin his first few seasons, in my opinion, our actual baseline inbounds plays have been pretty darn good this year. So whichever assistant coach or graduate assistant or perhaps just Martin himself deserves credit for that, well done. My, my whole thing is... Just copy the plays that work. There are, <laughs> there are really good inbound plays that, fr frankly, the pick the picker play always works, right? That's worked from sixth grade. But seriously, though, just steal the plays that work against you. There are teams out there that are notoriously good at having baseline inbounds plays. Just look statistically. Who are the best teams at this? Well, bring up their film. Just steal those plays. This isn't rocket science. In the digital age, Every single team has their games out there on YouTube, basically. Go pull them up and, and find the film. So anyway, I'm really glad that Missouri has finally figured some stuff out there. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like Conzo Martin has figured out that he can occasionally take a timeout to stop the momentum of a game, especially on the road. In the first half of that ball game, Missouri had a double-digit lead, and Alabama was just slowly whittling it down with a, with a run. You could just kind of feel the crowd starting to get into it, and a lot of times coaches will traditionally at least take a timeout in those moments. Now, I understand you only get four this year, so that's one less timeout than there usually is, but the thing is, how did Martin really use his one time out there in the first half. Well, he called it with 1.3 seconds left. It didn't really do much. Missouri didn't get off a great shot attempt there or anything. So to me, conzo has got to rethink that a little bit. It's okay to call time out when things are clearly going bad, when your team's just giving up an 8-0 run or something like that and the crowd's starting to go crazy. Hey, it's all right. Just call time out. Maybe put somebody else in the game to change the flow, change the, the outlook of the floor, whatever it might be. But Again, that's just something that's nitpicky, but something Martin just really hasn't done a whole lot in his time at Missouri. Well, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill were all among the heroes, obviously, of a wild Kansas City Chiefs Buffalo Bills game last night. But Nick Bolton, an underrated key role in that victory, too. So let's talk about Nick and those Chiefs. 
But first, let's talk about Bet Online, who would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. And yes, indeed, what a game yesterday for the Chiefs. But you probably are having a happy new betting year if you took the shocking underdog Francis Ngannou on Saturday. Well, no matter what you're into, whether it is fighting, whether it is football, Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action in 2022. New year and a new updated desktop and mobile website as well. So check it out. And when you do, use the promo code LOCKED ON to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Again, use the promo code LOCKED ON to get 50% off on your first deposit. At Bet Online, where the game starts. And by Built Bar. And yes, it is a new year. So that means New Year's resolutions. And if your resolutions are about getting fit or eating healthier, well, I've got a plan for you. It's Built Bar, the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. Heck, maybe even better than a candy bar, some would say. Well, Here's the thing, Built Bar makes it easier to stick to your resolutions because it tastes so good you'll actually want to eat it. Unlike other protein bars, which, let's be honest, can be a little chalky, waxy, or frankly, taste like a chemical spill off of I-70. No, you don't want that. What you want to eat, you want something to eat healthy, but gosh, eating healthy just gets awfully boring at times. At a certain point, you need some chocolate. Well, Built Bar has you covered because they're covered in 100% chocolate, 130 calories per bar, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Not too bad, right? Compare that to a Snickers bar. You're doing a heck of a lot better. So go to Built.com, use the promo code LOCK15, and you'll get 15% off your order. Again, promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built. Dot com. Well, as wrestling podcast tycoon Conrad Thompson likes to say, a lot to unpack from that Chiefs-Bills game. Frankly, too much to unpack in just a few minute segment here that I have left in this show. But you know what? So let's let's talk about Nick Bolton. That to me, that a very underrated play of this ball game. Bills have the ball third and two just inside the 50-yard line. And as we saw all game, the Bills are not afraid to go for it on fourth down. And hey, when you got Josh Allen, why not? I mean, I, I'm the biggest Patrick Mahomes fan on the planet, quite frankly. I'm about as big as it gets. I, I've been on him since college. But regardless, the thing is, Nick Bolton, as great as Patrick Mahomes was, I don't think we we win the game without this Nick Bolton play. We actually forced a Buffalo punt here again Bolton third and two just completely destroys who is the MVP of the game other than Josh Allen Gabriel Davis just destroys a block kills this stretch play they lose two or three yards again forcing Buffalo to actually punt the ball Nick Bolton was a really underrated element not only of this game, but the whole season. Frank Clark said it, the, the, the Chiefs defensive end after the game. You know what? That guy's one of the best rookies in football right now. So congratulations to him. Nick Bolton seems like a great dude, so obviously you got to be happy for him. No doubt about it. Now, to get a little bit of a Missouri tie-in here, former longtime, actually, Columbia Tribune sports editor Joe Wall Jasper, briefly my boss for a little bit, Joe's still a really good columnist, funny guy, by the way. But on Twitter last night, he's a huge Chiefs fan. He was saying, I was screaming at Hill, meaning Tyreek Hill, of course, to go out of bounds at the one. In other words, when he had that long touchdown, they scored with about a minute left. Listen, every single Chiefs fan, every single person who was watching that game had to think, wow, incredible play. And then about a second and a half later, you're thinking, oh, man, they gave him too much time to score, right? Well, I'm not one of the people who says you should step out of bounds at the one there. I'm really not because, and here's why I would be really curious to see what the, the analytics, the, the numbers, the spreadsheet says, do you have a better chance to win? Actually, if Tyreek steps out at the one in theory, maybe then on first down, you, you take a knee, let 30 seconds run off the clock, but, but you see kind of the problem here already, at least my problem with it, right? 
Now you're saying, okay, we had a sure touchdown. We had a we had a sure lead, more importantly, with a minute left in the game. And to me, you can't say, oh, well, we'll definitely score a touchdown on second and goal from the one. It just doesn't really work that way. That's not how football works. You saw the Chiefs on a critical fourth and one. Well, we can question that play call, certainly, right? A speed option with Blake Bell. I don't know about that one, but obviously it didn't work. The point is you're not going to always get those. That's not a sure thing. However, I am open to the idea of, okay, that actually what did give Kansas City, considering how great and unstoppable Josh Allen had been in that game, I'm open to, to the idea. But to me, it's, it's almost not even about the numbers. In that kind of football game with those kind of stakes on the line, you almost just have to ask yourself, what can I live with? Because to me, if I would have told Tyreek Hill, or if I am Tyreek Hill, wh- whichever scenario, if I step out the one-yard line with a surefire touchdown, I mean, he threw up the peace sign at, at the 15, so obviously he had a surefire touchdown there. He had, a, he had a moment to think about it. Not a very long moment as fast as he's moving, but the point is he could have done it. He absolutely could have just stepped out of bounds right before the goal line and given the Chiefs a first and goal. But he didn't, and I agree with him because, again, if he does that and then the Chiefs are stuffed, they don't get a touchdown and they lose the game on that, to me, that's not something I can live with. I cannot live with that. But if if Josh Allen comes down, scores a a touchdown in a minute without any timeouts, I don't think. I, I Correct me if I'm wrong on that one, but regardless, I can live with it. At a certain point, you have to play defense and say, can't we stop them? Even if we only have a minute? Well, apparently not. What, what more can you say? I mean, I, I as bummed out as I was before the last 13 seconds, again, before that last incredible 13 second sequence where the Chiefs get two plays for 50 yards, kick a field goal, absolutely incredible. But before that, as, as despondent as I was, and I was bummed out, I was, I was heartbroken. But you know what? I could live with it. I just thought, well, we just didn't have the ball last. Josh Allen was great. Patrick Mahomes was great. What can you do? I can live with it. I'm telling you, if it, if it was the other way, if we'd have stepped out at the one-yard line and tried to get too cute and lost the game that way, I, I would have never, ever forgiven Andy Reid for that. So that's just me. I'd be curious to hear what all of you think at Locked on Mizzou on Twitter. And hey, maybe I'll uh, show you guys some pictures from down in Key West at the uh, the real world house that we stayed at. Apparently, one of the seasons of the real world was was shot at this particular house where we had our Airbnb. Pretty good time. Maybe I'll put out some pictures over on my Instagram at Locked on Mizzou or anywhere else on the old social media. By the way, of course, thanks for making this your first listen. Why not make your second listen Locked on Bets with your boy Q and Lee Sterling, your one-stop daily shop for all your gambling needs. Of course, it's free and available on all platforms. And thanks for being patient with me while I was on vacation. We're back to full time right here on Locked on Mizzou.